Hi, this is Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technology. Shortly before wheat seeding most years, we had a lot, get a lot of calls from growers asking about successful no-till wheat into soybeans. They're hesitant, they don't want to do it. It's something new. And I've got growers that have no-tilled into soybeans very successfully for 30 plus years, meaning they're seeing equal or higher yields with no-till than they are work ground. Plus it's saving them the expense of all of the tillage. And on rolling fields like this, especially with some of the high intensity rainfall events that we've had in the past few years, we really shouldn't be tilling ground unless you've got a field that's tracked up or compacted. So we often dig fields and look at root structure, root mass, see if there's any soil compaction problems. As long as there's not any compaction, you know, I feel pretty good no tilling wheat into soybean residue as long as growers spread residue with a combine at harvest time. There's lots of other tips that we'll present in this video, so let's get started. So a wise man once told me, you have to begin with the end in mind. So for us to achieve a uniform density of heads at harvest time in the ideal range according to your production region, which is likely 600 heads per square yard or something close to that, you absolutely have to begin with the right amount of plants according to the seeding date and you've got to spread residue evenly at harvest time to get a well configured and adjusted drill in the ground to a consistent depth. So ideally the drill will be well configured, well set up, good sharp displays, good closing systems, but you've got to be able to spread the residue evenly to get those seeds in the ground, especially into high yielding soybean crops. I mean, if you've got a high yielding soybean crop with a lot of residue, even if it's spread evenly, you've got to ballast your drill according to the conditions to be able to convert that frame ballast into down pressure to press that disc in the ground until the gauge wheel is firmly pressed against the soil surface and that will regulate your seeding depth ideally into moisture assuming moisture is available. So you've got to have a good closing system to close the slot also. The challenge is a lot of growers struggle to spread residue evenly with the combine. A lot of growers are putting 40 maybe 45 foot heads on the front of a combine but their combines are only spreading 30 feet or 35 feet at the back, meaning they're not able to spread residue uniformly, and that's the important word, all the way across the width of the header. So the residue has got to be spread evenly. You can't tolerate bands of residue like what I'm showing here in the image. That's just not going to work for high yielding wheat. The reason is these heavy bands often result in hair pinning, they often result in shallow seeding depths where they raise, raise up the gauge wheels. You've sometimes got open seed slots if it's wet, and then you've got slow warming, especially in the spring. The end result is you've got delayed emergence, less plants per unit area per square yard, and less tillers per plant. And the biggest problem in a year when you've got fusarium is if your heads don't all head out at close to the same time, you're going to really struggle getting good fusarium suppression with the better products such as currently available Prosaro Pro or Miravis Ace. They're not going to work very well. So you've absolutely got to begin with the end in mind by spreading residue as evenly as possible all the way across the header width with a good chopper spreader at the back of the combine. We like to do stand counts, you know, see how each area of the drill, see how each of the field looks relative to the ideal range for your area. So here's a good example where a combine didn't do a very good job spreading residue. There's clumps of heavy residue, and where there's clumps of heavy residue, the opener gauge wheels in this example climbed up on the residue, and you end up with shallower seeding depths. So these seeds weren't able to be positioned into moisture, and it took a rain for these to come up. The challenge was it didn't rain for about two weeks after planting, so these seeds, or a lot of these seeds, sat in dry soils for two weeks, while surrounding areas in the same field were already emerging. So we've got differential emergence as a direct result of poor residue distribution, especially in these heavy bands with clumps 
you know, this is not good at all. We've absolutely got to spread residue as evenly as possible at harvest time to get the kind of yields that we need uh, to justify these higher input costs. So absolutely begin with good quality seed. Ideally varieties that are proven to perform in your area with higher yields and good standards of standability. Ideally you're also going to place phosphorus in the row at seeding time. There's masses of research that shows higher yields when you place phosphorus in the row compared to broadcast. Lastly it's critical that you burn down any grass weeds or broadleaf weeds that are in the field at seeding time. You may even consider a residual herbicide so you can control seeds, control weeds all the way through the fall and spring season with a residual product. So these are some tips to help make your no-till wheat into soybeans more successful and more profitable. Thanks for watching.